had it been above 13 degrees, this is what I wanted to wear. However, it is 13 degrees and hasn't stopped raining all month. So we're in this today. So I started my capsule wardrobe journey about five years ago now. I know time flies. I would say that I've moved away from the capsule wardrobe model as of late, however I learned a lot while I was honing and fine-tuning my wardrobe and I'd like to share with you some of my biggest mistakes. It's still not all smooth sailing, it's still a sharpish learning curve but I, I feel like now's a good time to share kind of some of the biggest regrets I have and the biggest mistakes as a previous capsule wardrobe owner and now still someone who tries to adopt that capsule wardrobe mentality into her current wardrobe. Just at the moment, I'm enjoying playing with fashion a bit more and not being limited so much by numbers. I'd say not much about the rest of my approach has changed. I made a list of, of regrets. Hashtag no regrets. Hello, if you're new around here, my name is Lucy Moon. I talk about beauty, fashion and lifestyle on this little channel of mine, art, culture, tech, pop culture, all of the good stuff. If you'd like to stick around, please hit subscribe and hit the bell notification if you're not new around here but you'd like to be notified when I upload. I didn't just want to make this about purchases that I've regretted, I wanted to make this a bit more like whole so it can kind of be a bit more of like a learning experience as well if you're going through the same thing. Although there are some items that I do regret buying and I will talk about those. My first capsule wardrobe regret is feeling too restricted and then suddenly kind of exploding and buying like a fast fashion haul. This was something I found myself doing throughout my capsule wardrobe journey because I think I was being a bit too restrictive with myself and instead of thinking more so what I will get 30 wears out of, instead I was thinking like must be a small number of clothes the whole time and so I felt myself kind of like build up and kind of like a fizzy fizzy like drink kind of pop open and just go to Zara and buy 15 items and I always regretted it like there were so many that I'd have to return sometimes I'd return everything because it was all so disappointing and then I'd end up paying the like four pound postage fee and that would be I'd, I'd have to pay four pounds for what you know and then with that would come guilt and shame and all those feelings around over purchasing but yeah I just found it really disappointing and now I'm a bit more loose with what I can buy and what, I, what I'm what i allowed. I, I don't put boundaries on it basically. And now I tend to make much more sensible purchasing decisions and I don't explode out of myself the way I used to. I'm not that impulsive with shopping. I kind of know where I'm at with it, the kind of things I like, the kind of things that integrate well into my wardrobe. So if I do see something that nowadays I go, ah, oh, yes, I love it, I'll let myself buy it. And that stops me from doing those kind of build up, explode out the top hauls. My next regret is buying shoes that I don't wear. Now don't get me wrong, I love a wardrobe essentials video and you know, all the clothing essentials you need to build your wardrobe, I love those. But sometimes they're a little too prescriptive and I really do buy into that. And so I ended up buying like, you know, way too many shoes that I don't actually use or wear. They didn't fit into my lifestyle. So for example, for some reason, I have like seven or eight pairs of heels and heeled boots. I don't really wear those and I didn't wear them in the environments that people say you will wear them in, like nights out and evenings out. I always wear flat shoes. I wear trainers or boots with a short heel. I do not wear high heels and yet I've accumulated them. And I love them and I want to wear them. It's just, I will always pick comfort and now I know that about me. I'm not an uber gal, I always get public transport. So I'm always in comfy shoes. And then in turn that means I only buy a few pairs of trainers but I overwear them almost and kind of get them too worn out so they actually don't have as long of a life as I'd like them to have. I'm really guilty of buying one pair of shoes and then living in them for an excessive amount of time. I'm currently doing it with my new balances and I've done it before with various pairs of trainers. So the lesson I've learned from this is that I need to buy more pairs of comfy shoes and actually alternate what I wear just to help with the longevity of the items. And in terms of heels, I almost never need to buy another pair of heels again. I will keep everything I have. I really like all the pairs I have, but I just do not need to buy any more. I need to not fall for it, not fall for the essentials of heeled boots. Ultimately, you know best what will fit in your wardrobe. And I'm actually thinking about making one of those essentials videos, but making it a lot more accessible, a lot more broad, so you can tailor it to what you actually wear. Because you know, for me, a trench coat is an essential, but for you, you might have never worn a trench coat in your life. Whereas maybe saying a smarter everyday coat might fit more people. It's also worth saying, I'm so my mother's daughter. Like my mum always brought me up saying, you should only wear comfy shoes, only wear comfy shoes, don't even bother buying a shoe if it's not going to be comfy and she was right god the number of days i spent in ballet pumps yeah i really i should have listened to my mother on this subject i 
have been very guilty in the past of buying a new dress for each event. And this was a failing of the capsule wardrobe I built myself, in my opinion. So in general, I only had things that I could make into casual outfits, but when there was a big event, let's say a wedding, or a work event that I wanted to look really nice for and feel like I was glowing, feel like confident and special. I didn't really have any clothes for that. So I ended up going around Oxford Street or Westfield a day or two before the events and just trying everything on and it was fruitless. It was a fruitless endeavor. I always came home with something that was incredibly trend led that I didn't even like that much. And then I ended up only wearing once or twice. And that was in my capsule wardrobe phase. These are items you probably haven't seen. And that experience of traipsing around the high street is just so demoralizing. But there was a point at which I realized I had to find some clothes that fit into that dressing up category and made me feel confident and glowy and great but also could be mixed and matched and paired with different bags and shoes to make an entire outfit that felt special still and that I wouldn't need to run around the high street for. If I saw a slightly dressier top that I really liked, I should buy it at that moment and not hold off because, ooh, I don't have anything planned. If you think it will fit well into your wardrobe and it will save you that journey and it fits well, makes you feel great, then absolutely buy that item. Let's talk quickly about like knowledge around fashion and fashion education, which for me, I obviously didn't think it was like a huge part, like you don't have to know loads about fashion to wear clothes, that's inaccessible. But over the time that I learned more about clothes, I realized I'd had such a narrow view of what it was to like buy items before then. I literally thought that you buy on the high street almost exclusively and then like you can buy secondhand. And actually I think you really need a mix of everything. I think I'm much happier now buying from some boutique brands, some designer brands, secondhand and the high street. And then also borrowing clothes and renting clothes and finding clothes from like your nan's wardrobe. I think all of this is like the bigger picture of what your fashion ecosystem should look like. But yeah, I was just going straight to High Street every time pretty much, and then occasionally browsing Oxfam. And then I feel like over time that meant I kind of ended up looking like everyone else. And fa I found it really challenging to style stuff in different and unique ways. And part of the thing that's kind of brought this change along is the fact that I love now browsing independent and boutique shops for like new kinds of bags and like different kinds of shoes and doing stuff like that and finding these other places from which to buy kind of other pieces to make your outfit special and unique. And for me, that creates some of that glow and makes me feel really special. If I found something special that, you know, maybe I found secondhand on Vestia or something and I'm like, yeah, I smashed this. Every time I wear it, I feel super cool. <laughs> and so it kind of removes a bit of that pressure to be like, oh my God, I wanna be the most confident, the most glowy, the most, um, me feeling person because I now have a wardrobe built of items that make me feel very me. And that does take time. I think there's a bit of a fallacy in the capsule wardrobe concept when you're coming from a place where you don't know much about how like how you like to dress or you don't have any background in fashion or style. There's this idea that the capsule wardrobe is effortless and it's just not, it's loads of work. To be building up a wardrobe instead of reducing down, they're two entirely different experiences and one in my opinion is much harder than the other. So the whole experience of building the capsule wardrobe was a massive education for me and even building my wardrobe still today. My next capsule wardrobe mistake is being too influenced by influencers. This is an honest one and this is close to my heart and I feel very vulnerable sharing it. <laughs> But if you're watching me, maybe you're in the same boat. I love creating mood boards, putting together inspiration for outfits, saving and organizing all of my clothing ideas. <laughs> love this hair for me. But I definitely have also fallen into the trap in the past of looking to influencers and how they style things as the gospel and being very, very swayed on what I bought and what I didn't buy, depending on their opinions on those items. And yes, I'm an influencer as well and yet I am also very influenced. For example, I've come across a shoe or a bag and I've seen someone wear it and think, oh, that's so ugly. And then I see my favorite influencer wear it a week later and I'm like, I want it. Lucy, this has resulted in some questionable purchases that did not suit me or my body shape. And I'm looking at you, satin skirts. And endless slip dresses and I'm looking at reformation in the eye right now. Again, this kind of shopping has led to some hefty return shipping fees and even some long trips to the depths of Notting Hill to avoid those hefty fees. So what I'm not paying in money, I am paying in time and my mental peace and clarity. So if you are in the same boat, my number one piece of advice would be 
follow a wide range of influences in style and fashion, or even in, in not style and fashion, in arts and culture and whatever you like, follow celebrities, find those style inspiration things that help you, but leave it a while. When you see something you think your mind has been turned on or turned onto from an influencer, leave it at the back of your mind for a month, see if you still like it. And I'll be honest, I am still influenced by influencers and sometimes it does get the better of me, but I'm a lot, lot better at catching it now. Let's talk a bit about color palette. <laughs> There's two points on this. The first is that in the process of learning what colors I like to wear, I ended up buying some pops of color, but I just, they weren't me. Honorable mentions go to the yellow Kankan backpack and the jacket, which was red that I bought with um, black and red with a shirling collar. I did get a lot of wear out of those, but my God, they were not my style. They were my style on some level and they could have been so good if I bought them in a slightly different color. But yeah, I shortened their life without even realizing because I bought the wrong color for me. So they only got like one or two years wear instead of three, four, five or six. Oh, also honorable mention, all the pink outfits I wore in summer 2018. Oh, honestly. Okay, the second part of this is um, slightly embarrassing, but we're just gonna say it anyway the beige phase. If you followed me a while, you know what I'm talking about. I think my cardinal sin confession is that for most of 2019, I only bought beige clothes. I just loved beige and that's fine, but by overbuying, it basically limited me. I couldn't see the floor. I really thought it was my end game, dressing tonally in beige for the rest of my life, but I couldn't see that it was just part of another trend cycle of my own life. And so I kind of needed to be able to take a step back and think maybe no, like a couple of items, fine, but that dress that doesn't fit you properly, but you like it because it's beige and beige only, it's just too big for you, return it. Do not keep it and wear it twice. I think I've learned through those two experiences, so please learn from my mistakes. Don't just go in on one color and maybe slowly experiment with color if you're gonna experiment outside of your comfort zone. For me, I'm probably never gonna wear like azure blue. Well, maybe I am. I feel like on this color train, we should add probably my biggest regret purchase. And this deserves a whole own video in its own way. But the Fendi camera bag I bought in 2019. So I really deliberated over this bag and I had the opportunity to get a bit of a discount on a bag on Browns. And so I went for this Fendi bag after a lot of deliberation. However, I didn't like it. After all of that thought, there were two elements of it that were very not me, even though the color palette was very me. So it was in black and brown, and I thought this is great, it will go with so many of my clothes, but there's so much more to going and fitting something into your wardrobe than the colors alone. So the two things that put me off it and made it just not really work in my wardrobe were the chunky chain, just it, I would have preferred a much shorter chunky chain, but it was this like long, quite like garish chain, which didn't really go with a lot of my delicate clothes. For some people, looks great, but um, in my, like wardrobe, it just didn't make sense. And secondly, the really large monogram design. I realized very quickly that I don't feel comfortable wearing big, like heavily branded items that are very like, again, out there. And like for some people it looks so good on them. But for me, again, I live in Hackney and I'm constantly on public transport and I'm very aware of the wealth inequality here. And I just feel like so flashy and so inconsiderate walking around with like a massive Fendi bag. It just doesn't, feel good to me or done in a more subtle way. Just wearing a big monogram across the entire bag, it just didn't work for me. And then finally, to top off that entire purchase, I was looking into reselling earlier this year and the whole value of the bag has dropped because it was such a trend piece and I hadn't really looked thoroughly and realized how trend led it was. And it made me realize that I need to buy bags that I either expect to keep forever or that I know will have a good resale value. This was none of those. And now it is actively losing money. It is dead weight in my closet. Moving on, not owning the right underwear was a massive hindrance to a lot of my sartorial decisions in the first few years of me doing a capsule wardrobe. There'd be items I really wanted to wear, but I needed a different color of knickers, for example, or a different bra. And for some reason, I spent ages deliberating over whether to buy those pieces of underwear when I should have just got a good range of underwear. It is the foundation for your outfits. Do not make the mistake that I did because I would have got a lot more wear out of some of my items in my closet 
had I had the correct underwear. And that also goes for socks. Do not neglect socks. Make sure you think about your sock purchases and you have nice socks that you are happy to show off with whatever outfit you are wearing. Socks, tights, and lingerie are super important parts of building an outfit. So don't waste those opportunities because you will get more wear out of your clothes if you have the right underwear to fit them. I spent a long time making decisions about my capsule wardrobe based on what other people thought. And you shouldn't do that. Especially in the early days, I really did take people's word for gospel. If someone told me they liked something, I'd be like, ooh, validated. If someone told me they didn't like something, I'd be like, ooh, no, no. I actually got rid of a top once because Jack said it made me look like a primary school teacher. And now I own loads of clothes Jack doesn't like and I don't care because I like them. And I don't like some of his clothes and that is fine. We're, it's personal style for a reason. I think in a more general sense, it just made me lean my capsule wardrobe quite basic. So I didn't end up embracing some of the things that I really like, but I was a bit scared to wear because of what other people would think. For example, glitter, um, shimmer, any interesting textures or patterns, and also feminine cuts. I tend to like lean towards more androgynous stuff because it seemed like kind of the dumb thing at the time that I was building my capsule wardrobe. It's a really important part of my style and it's great. But I do look back and think, oh, there's so many opportunities I probably missed for clothes that would have fit perfectly into my style and my wardrobe, but I didn't buy out of fear of what other people would say. I would honestly say that that moment ended when I bought my leopard print coat. There are lots of people that do not like my coat, but I love my coat. And I think as well, being a bit older, I've seen so many trend cycles come and go that now I take a much more holistic approach. Like it's given me a lot more perspective on the fact that I can buy something Maybe for a few seasons, it feels really out of fashion. So I put it under my bed and then in a few seasons time, it makes way more sense. So I get it back out. And having that fluidity and that understanding that while your taste might change on a macro level, there's also the much, on a micro level, I mean, there's also a much larger macro scale and you should keep hold of things that you still really love. Just maybe you feel like don't necessarily fit where you're at right at that moment. Ooh, a controversial one. I regret buying sustainable items that I didn't actually like that much. I have many thoughts around how we consider sustainability in terms of fashion and also, to be honest, how gendered that is because I really don't see those same criticisms being leveled at men and men's fashion. In terms of my current philosophy on clothes, I believe that it is much better for the planet to only buy clothes that you genuinely feel you're gonna wear for a long period of time. And I don't mind where those clothes come from. If you are buying fast fashion, but you're actually getting at least 30 wears out of it, then be my guest. Because there's a point at which that just levels off. You're not gonna be doing fast fashion hauls every week and be able to wear all those items forever. That's just not how it works. And ultimately we're currently in a system where it's near impossible to entirely support workers' rights and avoid fast fashion. At the moment, it's just a shitty system with shitty alternatives. So I think the idea that you truly just buy sustainable is slightly classist and a whole host of other things. But um, each to their own, you're welcome to disagree with me. There's the point of nuance and opinion is that we all don't have the same opinion on things and that's absolutely fine. But yeah, for me, the main priority should always be making sure you're gonna wear the clothes you buy a lot. Anyway, so with that in mind, I definitely fell into the trap of buying items from sustainable brands or sustainable places, let's say secondhand, and feeling as though like, oh, that guilt and shame because I'm not buying fast fashion won't be there, but then actually not wearing the item at all and giving it away. It's so silly. Like I just created more waste and it was all to alleviate my own guilt around shopping and ultimately it created more guilt. Just buy clothes you like and you're going to wear. And I was just leaning towards these sustainable items or these secondhand items because I thought I'd feel less guilty when I bought them. And that's not a good reason. <laughs> that's not the right reason to buy anything. In that particular camp, I'd like to shout out two shirts I bought in a Bethel Green secondhand market that I never wore and also some trousers from Everlane. And finally, forcing myself to wear items that didn't fit. And this one is a bit painful because unfortunately my body is just not built for most fashion. I have huge hips and a tiny waist and a big bum. And unfortunately, nearly all bottoms are not built like that. But I do get clothes tailored now, really would recommend that. But yeah, this one's pretty self-explanatory, but over the years I have bought items that I was convinced maybe I could wear, maybe I'd make it work. And it never worked because ultimately it was too tight, too small in one place, too short in one place. And I would persevere, but I'd only wear it about six times and then be like, mm, well, I just end up relegating it to the back of my wardrobe for the rest of forever. And in particular jeans, jeans are tough and hard to find, but now I will 
only buy jeans that fit me. At least are comfy. I'd much rather they were a bit too big than a bit too small. A notable mention will go to the Levi's 501 crop jeans. They were incredibly tight on my thighs, even while standing. They fit everywhere else, but the thigh was for some reason incredibly narrow and it was just an ordeal from start to finish wearing them. Now I get things tailored and my life is much better. So those are my capsule wardrobe regrets. I hope you found this a little bit entertaining, a little bit educational, <laughs> and hopefully it helps you make better decisions when it comes to your wardrobe. Thank you so much for watching. Like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I will see you next week for another video. Ooh, 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 ooh. I was actually meant to be filming a styling video <laughs> today, but as you might be able to tell, the weather is just dreadful. And to film in this room, you kind of have to have a lot of extra light to be able to set it all up. So unfortunately that was a no-go today, but hopefully next week we can hold out. There's gonna be sun, it's gonna be good.